Hey everyone, this is Darren with Crazy Minnow Studio again, and welcome back. In our previous video, we went over the data analysis section under settings for Salsa, and in this video, we are going to go over the dynamics, particularly the advanced dynamics. That's my favorite part. So, dynamics. Basically, we start off with this linear scale cutoffs. And uh, what this does is this low end here is basically a cutoff value so that you can eliminate it. Like if you have a noisy file or whatnot, you can adjust this up so that uh, it's also will treat anything below this as nothing. It will toss it out. So if we think about this on a zero to one scale, a normalized value, then this part is zero. So this 0.045, anything below that will be tossed out, and anything above that will start at zero and work our way up. Now, this one operates similarly, the high end, but it doesn't cut anything off, or it doesn't cut off values necessarily. What it does is it scales this upper end, which is normally one. So this would be basically zero to one, right? So it's all linearly scaled through this range. So from 0.045, to one is actually zero to one. So it's not much of a difference, but where this comes into use is if you've got, a, say, a kind of a quiet recording and you want more dynamics from it, you can adjust this down. Uh, basically, if we've got this one set, see, like right now, this one's set to a 0.73, uh, it, it, it may never see that if we don't ever get up past it. But what this will do is it will bring our range down. So like if we set this to, and this is this is usually where we set it. And these recordings that, like this demo recording, is is a pretty good recording, and it's very dynamic. So it has a lot of lows and a, a, and a lot of high values as far as the amplitude is concerned. But if you've got something that's a little bit quieter, or if you're trying to adjust for a microphone, we talked about microphones in the previous video, we, we might want to adjust this down. So then what happens is, I'm going to put this to an even number here. We'll just say 0 0.6. And uh, then what happens is, Basically, this is zero and this is one. So it scales all of this linearly from zero to one. And the effect that has is it spreads it across our trigger range a little more fluidly. There I am clicking things again. So we might get higher up in the trigger range more frequently that way. And that may or may not be what you want. So if you have dialogue recorded where it's just regular speech and then you have some areas that you know are going to get loud and you want them to be more expressive, then you may leave this up here somewhere, maybe even at one. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, well, we'll put this back to 0.75. And, uh, and I believe, if I recall, that is the default value. So 0.045 to 0.75. All right, so advanced dynamics. So if this is not enabled, everything folds out of your way, and then you get this global dynamics piece. So we'll talk about this, and then we'll go into advanced dynamics. So global dynamics means what we're going to do is reduce the amount of animation that happens over all of our visims, every one of them, not just a single one. So if we leave it at one, then basically, and this uses a uh, pucker lips wide for the W. It only has one component on it. We go from zero to one, which on the blend shape itself means zero to 100, right? These are normalized values, so it gets converted. Blend shape weights uh, are zero to 100. It, global dynamics, what that will do is if I adjust this down, let's say I set it at say 50, I don't know, about 50%, then all of these visims will operate at half of what their maximum animation is. And we can see that in effect in the preview display mode. So while our global dynamics is uh, less than one, we cannot adjust the individuals on here. All right, so that, this is just so we can look at these. And you see, as I do this, so at one, that particular Vizim, this is full on. Once I reach one, then I can adjust these. So you can see, basically setting that one up there to 50 is the same thing as setting this one here to 50%. Now, if it's already 50%, and then I adjust this, then now it's going to be half of whatever this one was. So this one was half, so it's going to be half of half, which is really 25%. So if you want to control 
the dynamics of your visims manually, then you'll turn advanced dynamics off and you'll adjust them. And you could, in one code setting, you can adjust these to, you know, if you wanted to do this, something like whisper, you know, this would be like some sort of mumbling kind of thing. And then this may be normal talking. And then this might be a very expressive or yelling, depending on how you have everything set up. But anyway, that is what global dynamics is for. Normally, you'll probably leave this at one and you will enable advanced dynamics. So if we look at advanced dynamics, uh, we see as soon as I enable this, let me go ahead and disable jitter. Uh, as soon as I enable advanced dynamics, we see this primary bias number. This is the minimum amount of animation you will see when a trigger is activated. Advanced dynamics is going to monitor the actual data analysis value. Let's look at the trigger display mode again. And it will choose depending on what the number is. Let's pick something up here. It's got a little bit wider gap here. If we hit above 0.18, we are going to trigger the TH visim and as long as it's below 0.32 or 0.33. That will trigger TH. So if this is not enabled, advanced dynamics is not enabled, then it will just animate that particular visim, the TH visim, all the way to its max on position. With advanced dynamics enabled, it will animate it to a percentage value between these brackets. And what that means is you will never get a, a stagnant or stale Visium expression. And in the old salsa, what you would frequently see, especially since it was just three Visiums, you would see it animate fully on and stay there until it came off. And even if it was the same Visium that was being triggered, like this TH, there might be variations in there. So with with uh, advanced dynamics on, it's going to be infinitely variable between 0 and 1 for that particular visim based on what the data analysis value is. Now, that may not be desirable because, like I said, between 0 and 1, we don't really want it to be 0. Maybe you do, but uh, odds are you don't. You want at least some animation. So you set this value to be the minimum amount of animation, and then it just infinitely varies it from whatever this number is to one for that visim. Hope that makes sense. So this is going to be your minimum amount of animation that's going to occur and then there's going to be variations based on the data analysis value that are applied beyond that. And what that does again is it eliminates that stale where it just looks like a, the shape is activated and not moving. You won't see that anymore. Now, we can go further with that. We can click Apply Jitter. And what that does is it, it still operates this way, but then it uses this percent chance. So in this particular configuration, we have a 25% chance to change whatever value is detected. We have a 25% chance to change that by 10% plus or minus. So that's basically, this is a plus or minus value. Now, where that comes in is if, uh, let's say you had a character that was singing and holding a note and uh, you wanted it to still look like there's some life there when uh, they're holding the note. And if you apply jitter, then you're gonna get a 25% chance that it's gonna change by 10%. And that's per update delay. Right, So every time that pulse is checked, so that's every eight one hundredths of a second, it's going to check to see if uh, if it meets this chance. If it does, then it, it'll adjust it by 10%. And the good thing about that is it, it, there's still some movement going on. And not a lot. There's not a lot of movement, but there's still movement. So it looks like it's still alive. It doesn't look like it's stuck. That's when you would use uh, jitter. And sometimes you just put it on just because it just varies things up. If you're not holding the same note, then I would probably question whether this is necessary. But if you potentially might be singing or holding some sort of note, apply jitter looks really good. The next option here is use secondary mix. To be totally honest, if you're using advanced dynamics here, you probably don't need to use secondary mix. But in a nutshell, what secondary mix does is it adds a blend of an adjacent shape and uh, technically it goes up so like if we trigger W it would mix in some T if we trigger F it would mix in some TH in this particular example and it mixes this much 27% uh, of it and that can really have a really good effect uh, more so if you have a lot fewer visims and then of course you can override those secondary mix settings we have them set to be uh, basically the same kind of timings that we have set in our visims, and uh, you can adjust this if you want to. I wouldn't recommend it. I would just leave it, but uh, if, you, if you want to, go ahead. Now, use rollback is specifically for 2D functions, 
And what this will do is if you have these 2D configurations, if you remember the video on expression components, you could add multiple frames of animation. What this will do is actually roll back those frames so that if it triggers a new Visium, since it's all playing on the same renderer, there's nothing to really animate off and then back on because it's, it's just swapping out to that same renderer. So what this will do is it will actually roll back first and then play forward the next one. So it gives a lot more uh, smooth and fluid motion. And we'll demonstrate this in a 2D setup in a future video. Okay, so let's let's look and see what these settings actually do. And uh, we may or may not see it very well when we've got this many Visims on, and so we might we might reduce this down a few. But let's go ahead and hit play. I've got it turned off right now. Salsa, simple automated lip sync approximation. The unique technology behind this okay, so provides high quality lip sync. You may or may not be able to see it. Actually, it probably can't, but it they animate up and they animate to the same spot every time, regardless of what the computed value is. Let me let me go to demonstrate this a little further. Let me let me remove some of these collapses. I'm going to take out T T H. I'm going to take these out. Okay. Let's adjust these. Since we removed, remember if we remove visims or add visims, we have to reapply our distribution. Okay. Salsa. Simple automated lip sync approximation. The unique technology behind the salsa provides high quality. Alright, you see we animate to the visim and we go to its max extent every time. Alright. Now when I turn on advanced dynamics, you'll see that zero requirement for pre processing or shape map. Audio. There's a lot more variation involved now. Basic jawbone animations you can't really tell which Visium you're on necessarily. Some of them are pretty expressive, but you, there's going to be different variations of those values. And we're, we're actually applying jitter right now, but technically you, you probably won't be able to see the difference unless we could actually hold on a single note and trigger the same Visium at the same value every time. Now, if we use secondary mix, we look forward to seeing what you create. Salsa, simple automated lip sync. The expressions are a little bit bigger now, and that's basically because when you start mixing visims, you got to be careful. If you turn this value up too too high, then you start getting all sorts of crazy overdriven stuff. See how we? And maybe that's what you want. It actually looks kind of cool, to be totally honest. And if I turn that off. Then we go back to the normal visims we've got configured. Okay, so I believe that covers pretty much everything in our settings section. Now, if you want to read more about these, again, we've got these links here. And so we're going to go to Salsa. This is just the overview. We can look at using and then find our uh, let's uh, settings section. And then this will discuss all of this information in probably more detail than I went over. But uh, here's a good information on the dynamics uh, for the upper and lower linear cutoffs. This kind of gives a visual representation of what it's doing. Anyway, uh, check out our documentation. And that will wrap it up for this video. And we will see you in the next. Thanks for watching.